Hi, this is PD at Bergzerg Arcade at bergzergarcade.com and this is tutorial number 97. Now in our last couple tutorials we had been working primarily with Simple Move. And Simple Move is great because it adds the gravity for you to pull your character down. And that only works when you're actually moving the character. But we looked in the last tutorial on how to be able to pull our character to the ground without being able to move. But we've, we've had a while to play with it now, so we're going to move on to something a little bit more advanced. And we're going to move on to the charactercontrollers.move function. And this doesn't give you any gravity at all. But it does give you a few more options. And we're going to explore a few of them in this tutorial, as well as add in our jump and a fall function for our character. So let's go ahead and open up Unity. And I'll just make sure model develop is open to two. Head back into Unity. And here's our old movement script. And you can go ahead and just edit this script. But since some people have purchased the scripts, I'm going to make one all like right from scratch. Just so, you know, it's easier for me so I don't have to keep commenting out lines and making sure that I don't accidentally overwrite stuff. So I'm just going to come into scripts. I'm going to create a new C-sharp script. And I'm just going to call this one, oh, let's call it Advanced Move. I guess we should have called it Advanced Movement, but Advanced, yeah, we'll do it. Since the last one was called Move, Movement. I'll open that in Mono Develop. I'll make sure to get the class name changed. And I'll just quickly save that, and I'm going to attach it to my player character. So here it is up here. I'll drop it on. And um, I could remove this, and I'll remove it later. But for now, I'm just going to toggle it off so it doesn't work. Uh, if, <laughs> if the only reason is just to have these variables exposed, so I can just quickly look at it. So let's go in to Mono Develop. And the method we're going to use, if we went back and looked at the old one, it was possible in the course of one frame, if we look at our update function, that we could call our simple move function more than once. And that's kind of frowned upon. You really shouldn't do it. It even mentions in the docs that you don't want to do it. So we want to make sure now that we're you know, moving along and getting a little bit better at it, that we only call it once. And I'm going to do this at the very end of my update function. So in order to do that, I'm going to need to get a reference to my controller. So I'm actually just going to copy a couple lines out of here. Uh, the first one I'm going to copy is the require component. So this line here, when you first attach this to a game object, it's going to tell it that it needs a character controller, and if it doesn't have one, to put one on. And I'm also going to copy the lines where we're creating a private transform to cache our transform, and also a private character controller for ourselves. And since I'm at it, I might as well grab the awake function. So I'll come back in, and I'm just going to paste these in. So there we go. I have my cache transform, my cache controllers, and in my awake function, I'm assigning value to them. So I'm going to come back down to my update function, and I'm going to write that line for our controller. So it's called controller dot move and if you notice it just takes a vector 3 and we'll fill that in in a bit for now I'm just going to leave it empty and I'm going to put some lines up here at least a little bit of spacing now in our update function the first thing I'm really going to want to look at right now is to check to see if the is grounded property of our character controller uh, if it's returning true or false. So we want to basically see if we're actually on the ground or not. So it's just if, then we're going to call our controller, and then just call it is grounded property. If it is grounded, we want to do something. And if it isn't, we want to do something else. Pretty simple. Uh, for now, we're just going to throw a quick debug in there just to see if it fires when we're grounded. And we'll just throw out the debug that, you know, we're on the ground. 
And that's probably going to error because we don't have a vector 3 in our movement yet, but let's just go ahead and check. And yeah, we have to put a, a vector 3 in here. So let's just go up here and actually make one. So I'm going to make it private. And well, it's going to have to be a vector 3, that we know. And I'm just going to call it, oh, move direction. If I could spell it right. And since it's private, I'll prefix it. And we'll just say this is the direction our character is moving. And just fix up there. And then in my start function, I'm just going to quickly assign that to be a zero value. So we'll say move direction is equal to vector three dot zero. So that basically zeroes out all three axes. And then we'll just tell it to move it in here. Now one of the advantages to using the dot move is that we can get the collision flags back from our move. So what that basically tells us is if we're colliding with anything, and basically where we're colliding with it. You know, is it the top? Is it the bottom? Is it the sides? And we're going to go ahead and create a variable for that. And I want to make it private, but for now, just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to make it public just so you can see what's going on. So public and a subtype collision flags. And I'm just going to call mine underscore collision flags. So the collision flags we have. I believe it's from the last frame. And don't forget your semicolon. And then I'm just going to take this variable and right down here where we're calling our controller.move I'm just going to say collision flags is equal to that since move returns the collision flags. Now we have a place to store them. So let's go back up in here where we added our debug log statement and we're going to start working on our new movement keys. Well, not, not actually the keys that move, but we're, we're going to be working with that variable that we created, our move direction. And we're going to do it a little bit different than last time. Last time we tried to detect if a key was pressed and if it was pressed, then add its value to it. Uh, this time we'll do it a little bit different. So we're going to say move direction. And we're going to make it equal to a new vector 3. And in this new vector 3 is where we're going to save that, that value that we're using to press forward, forward or backwards on our character. So since moving forward and backwards on our character just involves the z-axis, we can just say 0, comma, 0, comma, and then input dot get access. And the axis we want was, I believe it was called move forward. If not, it's going to tell us. And another way we could probably also write this would be to say move direction is equal to vector three dot forward multiplied by input dot get axis move forward either one would either one should work uh, since I have the first one typed out I'm just going to use it so in this line, we're capturing uh, how much we're supposed to move forward or backwards based on the based on the value that we're getting back from that axis. Now it's a very small number, so we're going to want to increase that number. But before we go ahead and increase that number, uh, let's find out the direction that we're actually supposed to be moving in. So we're just going to say move direction is equal to, and then we're going to want to get our transform direction. So we'll call my transform, transform direction, 
And then we're going to pass in this move direction. And we're going to want to call it normalized. What's that, what that is going to do is return a vector which is in the same direction that we that we want to go in, but it's only going to be of length 1. And now that we have the direction we want to go in at a length of 1, let's go ahead and multiply it by how fast we're supposed to move. So I'm just going to go back into my movement script, and I'm going to copy these variables that we created up here. There we go. And I'm going to change some of the names. Instead of move speed, I'm going to call it walk speed. Uh, run multiplier, strap speed, and rotate speed. All the rest are good. So I'm going to take this walk speed. And in the next line, I'm just going to tell it to take my move direction. And I want to multiply it by our walk speed. So this is just shorthand in case you've never seen it before. It just basically says uh, move direction is equal to move direction times walk speed. So it basically just saves you typing out that variable one time. And this wasn't supposed to be my, tri my transform. It was supposed to be move direction. And it looks like we're already over 12 minutes. Boy, it goes by quick. Well, let's hurry up and throw a debug in here. And in here, we're just going to say that we're not on the ground. So if we were to go ahead and go into Unity and fire it off, we should just keep getting the not in ground debug message flying up because, well, we're in midair. And if we go back to the scene view, target our character and hit F, you know, as you can see, we're up in the air. So I'm just going to quickly save this off and we'll just uh, move on to the next tutorial where we add some code in to start pulling this down to the ground. I'll see you then. Bye-bye.